you will always be holy, holy forever, Lord, you will always be holy, holy forever, Jesus, cause your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name it stands above the all above all kings oh above all powers above the millions it stands above them all your name god your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all above all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all you will always be Thank you, Jesus. This is not easy for me, but I know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In the mighty name of Jesus, you're with me now and forever. Let this be a blessing unto people, unto your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, everyone. How is everybody doing? I hope everyone is good. This is very difficult for me. Like, if you could see my leg, my leg is shaking. Like, it's just not... I've changed over the years like I used to be I used to be a sharer somebody who easily shares with people and others so that others can you know um, identify and not feel like they're dealing with whatever they're dealing with by themselves but I think in the recent years year and a half since my mom passed I just become very reserved and I just don't really like to share. I just want to keep myself to myself and just mind my business. And everybody can live their lives. And um, my sister encouraged me. Um, I'll put a testimony up here. She um, filmed a testimony of deliverance. And it's crazy because mine occurred before hers. Because mine occurred on the 1st of January 2024, literally the first day of the new year but I like I said I've been really reserved and I've just been really I don't know scared I think it's all obviously rooted in fear but you know God has not given me a spirit of fear but power love and a sound mind so we have to we have to share um I'm gonna give some context so um so my mom passed in 2022 November 2022 and uh, since then life has been different as a Riley, sorry. And I, she was my best friend. She was, she was everything to me. You know, everybody thinks I'm strong, but I'm really, she was my strength. And obviously God is our strength, but you know, sometimes as human beings, we need that physical, that physical presence. So that's why God said that we're not supposed to live alone, you know, because we can't, we're not supposed to, you know. And she was my best friend. She was my source of strength. She was my inspiration. She was the person I talked to whenever something happened. And, you know, because we lived together, she lived here with me. And every time I come home, she knew all my colleagues and their names and the stories and all my friends and stuff. So all the guys I'll be speaking to, whatever. And um, so when she left, obviously life wasn't the same anymore. I have an amazing relationship with my dad as well. He also is my best friend, as you can see from postings I've posted. But it's different, isn't it? Like a mom is different from a dad, no matter what. And um, it's just been weird. Yeah, just been different. And it's just not really, you know, but God has given me and my sisters and my dad strength. But... I mean, the first week she passed, obviously, it was very weird, and the funeral, and after the funeral, the first Christmas without her, it was just, 
it's just difficult for my dad, you know, they've been also for him as well, they've been married for 35 years and then all of a sudden the woman, your best friend, your, the love of your life just goes like daily life becomes very, very strange, you know. And God is our shepherd, he comforts us, he takes care of us, but it's just, it's just, it was just tough. So, okay, so the team passed in 2022, 2023. That was last year. Now, 2023, my dad has to go to Ghana in November to commemorate the one year anniversary of my mother and also to sort out a lot of logistics and bureaucracies and banks and things, anything to do with my mom, basically. And I was meant to go with him, but because of the nature of my sickness, I just couldn't go because I wouldn't be able to stay away for that long because of dialysis and everything so I couldn't go so my dad left in November and then I came home and I was fine because it's not the first time right that he's gone away so it's fine but then the week so then I was going to work it was like a Wednesday I think then Thursday I went to work Friday I went to work like it was fine then the weekend came Saturday and all of a sudden I felt this loneliness for me and my dad has been away, has been to Ghana before and where I've been here by myself. Like in 2021, him and my mom went to Ghana together to bury my grandfather. And they were, they were gone for like two months. And I was here by myself for two months. So it's not like I've never been by myself before. But obviously the difference is that at that time my mom was alive. So I was speaking to her every day. Every day we'll call each other, ask her how she's doing, how's everything, the things that be happening. So I never felt the loneliness, even though they were physically away. But this time my mom wasn't around and my dad was gone and he's gonna be gone for months. And I felt so lonely for the first time. I felt so low, I felt so lonely. And for the first time in a long time, because the last time I felt this lonely was this kind of level of only was when I was in the UK before I came back to Italy but even then it was different because my mom was alive so even in the UK in that loneliness in the midst of all the suicidal thoughts that I had I could still call my mom and I could still speak to her and I could still you know have conversations with her but this time there's no mom and it really threw me off I was really really down I was really low um, I messaged my sisters and a couple of trusted friends and I just I just couldn't I just couldn't and I felt really low but you know I spoke to my sisters we prayed together and was able to vent with them and having conversations with them so somehow I kind of got out of it in a sense and was able to cope with daily life um, normally um, then it was time for Christmas so work was really really busy at that time Work was really, really busy at that time. There was a lot going on. Um, there was so much happening. And, you know, but it, was, it was good busy because it's like Christmas where everybody's like excited for Christmas. And then I already booked my ticket to go and see my sisters. I'm going to be in England for two weeks. Massive risk. Never been away for that long with dialysis ever. The maximum I've done was when I went to Israel with my dad for one week. And that was even like a stretch so like yeah so that was crazy but you know I was like I can't spend Christmas by myself and I mean I was tempted to but then I was also like okay Anna don't be silly like your sisters are there they want you to come to just go so the 23rd of December yes I went and then I was first I was at my sister's George's house and we were there, then Isaac my brother was there and we were all together and it was fun and then I went to Nando's for lunch and I had my Starbucks, my chai tea latte, which I can't find here. So I was like looking forward to it. But when we're walking back, I was feeling really sick. And I was like, guys, I don't, I don't, I'm not feeling well. So they thought it was an excuse, right? They thought, oh, no, you just missed it out. Because that night we had carol service at church and already expressed that I, did, I could not be bothered to go. And they thought it was an excuse to not go to carol's night. But I'm like, no, guys, I'm not <laughs> joking. I'm actually feeling sick. And so when we got home, like, we felt my temperature, I was hot, I was sh shivering, like, yeah, I was not well. And I was sleepy and I was like, I couldn't, 
I was sick basically and so my sister today went to the carol service and they came back my sister prayed for me I watched online because obviously I couldn't go and so I was sick so I was sick throughout Christmas which I heard a lot of people were anyway so cool but then after not unboxing day which is the 26th of December I went to my sister's Gabby's house and then I moved there until I came back to Italy so I stayed there for the rest of the holidays and I was still sick but it was getting worse it became diarrhea then I was vomiting and then I like I was coughing and then it was sore throat and it was a lot we figure out later what it was but which is like to do with the dialysis stuff and everything but I just couldn't enjoy the holidays like I had every morning I had excruciating stomach pain it was so painful like excruciating stomach pain I have to take the version the English version the Italian version of paracetamol basically every time and you know you can't take paracetamol all the time because you become dependent to it as well but I couldn't like if I didn't take it I would literally like it felt like I was dying my stomach was killing me when I got back I found I had an infection but the whole time I was there I didn't know but then once I would eat it was fine but this has been going on for months like even before I went to the UK but it got stronger during the holidays and obviously I got kidney failure as you can see also from my previous videos it was just painful and I just was like I, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm actually done I was done I was done I remember one night I was awake and my stomach was killing me and I couldn't sleep and I just was like I'm done I'm done with this I'm done with this life what's the point what is the actual point what is the point my mom is not around I'm here what have I achieved in my life I couldn't marry the love of my life I couldn't do like I'm done it like I, what am I doing with my life I'm living still with my parents which I'm glad that I'm living with my dad because I don't know when my mom passing what would have been but everything is just like the achievements I should have achieved that I, I haven't I just felt like my life was a mess and it just wasn't worth living for and I know it sounds crazy to a lot of people but from like because I'm always like vibes but honestly it's not always like that there's ups and downs every morning the struggle to get up out of bed it's not just because it's cold and the, the bed is warm it's legit physically because of the sickness it's so hard to get out of bed it's so hard to like people don't understand what I go through on a daily basis people don't have no idea I can explain it to you but you would never understand I think on my blog a little bit I can explain how it is but nobody understands what it takes for me I'm a teacher as well the energy that I give to my students how much it takes out of me compared to another person because of my condition of their condition it's not my energy's name because of their condition and even going to bed I have to do all these procedures like you can see at the back my dialysis stand that's for the manual one the machine is on the other side the, the people don't understand what I what my body and then obviously ultimately what I go through every day the, the nausea that comes from nowhere like you're eating and you can't finish eating I've lost so much weight like I'm so because I, I like like whenever I eat these days I, it makes me like the smell of food it's just like makes me sick so I eat what I need to eat and then that's it do you know what I mean like it's a struggle it's tough but in all this, I see the grace of God. I see God's grace because it's God's grace that has kept me. This is nothing to do with me or my personality or my strength. It's the grace of God that has kept me alive. It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God that has, has, has kept me all these years. I mean, I should have been dead. That's another testimony. There's so many testimonies to share that I've never shared because... You know I don't know like in my mind I'm thinking who actually cares like do people care <laughs> do you mean but um there's so many testimonies I should have I died a long time ago and God is like it's not time so there is a purpose but this is what happens when you this is what happens when you completely look at yourself and you don't fix your eyes on Jesus when you fix your eyes inwardly and you look at yourself, your condition, your situation, what you're going through, this is what happens. You feel sorry for yourself. Self-pity becomes big. 
you feel sorry for yourself. Oh, look at my life. Oh, look at me. Oh, what look, look at what I'm going through. Look at my circumstances. What kind of cards have I been given? Have I been dealt with? Look at my life. Look at me. Look, everybody else seems like they're thriving, but me, but me. You really lose focus of what really matters and you really lose focus of God's blessings. Because guys, I do suffer. Suffering is my, is part of my life because of the condition, but God loves me. God has been gracious to me. This sickness, you don't live this long. I've had it for 12 years. You don't, you just don't. You don't live this long without either passing away or having a transplant. I am still on dialysis. It's just, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. The, the, the things that I'm able to do, I drive. I get out of bed. I work. These are things that are not so, they're not so common. They're not so common, especially at the stage of my kidneys. My kidneys are functioning at 3%. A normal person at my age with functioning kidneys have a kidney function from 100 to the maximum of 120%. Like if your kidneys are perfect, they're 120%. I'm running on three. But if you see me jumping up and down with the kids in school, or laughing with them or cracking jokes or driving around or going food shopping or doing the things that I do, you will think I've got like at least 90. You have no idea, it's three. And that's the grace of God. I can't even, there's, there's no credit. There is no credit to be given. But in that moment, I was like overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, it was Christmas. Another Christmas, another Christmas without my mom, another Christmas without her presents. It was just, it was just sad, you know, and I was done and I was determined, like I'm done. God, I don't know what you want me to do. I don't, I don't know what else to do. I've prayed, I have fasted, I have done, I have given, I have done whatever you ask me every time. I, I can't do this anymore. I am done. And so the next morning, again, my stomach is paining me. It's killing me. I have to take paracetamol and sit there and was still in pain because it takes a while for obviously to kick in and it takes a while for it to like disappear so I was my sister was sitting next to me and it's crazy so it was my sister next to me with my nephew Caleb she was carrying him and uh, the TV was on and literally I was about to tell her Gabby um, I just want you to know that if when, okay, in a week's time, I'm going back to Italy because it was the 1st of January, so on the 6th, I was leaving on the... When was I leaving? On the 6th, yeah. So I said, in five days' time, I'm going back to Italy. I just want you to know that if you hear that I've... When, when you... When or if? When you hear that I've killed myself and I've committed suicide, don't be surprised because I can't... I really... I cannot do this life anymore like this. I just can't. I can't. So I was like... I was like, I can't and i'm sorry and i'm apologizing in advance and apologize to dad for me and apologize to everybody and apologize to my friends that will message you and apologize to everybody because i really can't live like this this is not life i can't do this anymore i can't deal with dialysis and the side effects i can't deal with the condition i can't deal with mom's absence i can't cope I can't cope with daily life. Every day I wake up, I'm like, can I do this today? And then I do it, but I'm like, I really can't do this anymore. Every day I look outside the window and I'm like, I really can't do this. And I'm like, okay, Anna, you can, you can. But then really inside, I'm like, I can't. I really can't do this anymore. I'm 33, what have I got to, to show for my life? What do I have to show for my life? At 33 years old, I can't do this. I can't do this again. This is not the kind of person I was. This is not how I was born. This is not the ambitious, driven, achiever kind of person that I was, the superstar athlete that I was meant to be, and whatever. I, this is not me, and I can't live like this anymore because I don't know what else to do to make a difference. So, I, so I know I'm gonna do it when I go home because I'm gonna be home alone. Nobody's there. People are gonna see me, the next time they're gonna see me is Sunday. If they call me, they don't get me, they don't get me. So, by the time they, f I was just thinking there, like by the time they find my body, man, you have been like a while because how would they even know? Because I, I'll be by myself and a lot of times I don't pick phone calls and stuff, so it would be a while. And I was just like, just so you know, this was gonna happen. So I was preparing the speech, preparing the speech in my mind and I was preparing all these things in my mind. 
and I was preparing how to phrase it to my sister just as I was about to say these things just as I was about to pull out these words my sister's like I'm gonna call Isaac I'm gonna pray for you and I was like okay like I was confused I was like that was like I was ready I'm like okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it now okay and I do it I'm gonna say it and then right when I was about to say it God spared me because the moment I would have said it God knows that the devil could just, even if they prayed for me, God, the devil will still hold on to those words that I've spoken because we know there's power in life, the power of life and death in the tongue. So I didn't have the time to say it because my sister said, I'm going to call Isaac, which is my brother-in-law, her husband, and we're going to pray for you. And I was like, okay. And so I was like, okay, I, that's fine. So I'm like, okay, after they pray, I'll just tell them, I'll still tell them what I want to say. <clears throat> she was like, we need to pray for my sister. And he was like, okay. It's like it's the 1st of January. We cannot carry over what was in 2023 in 2024. And so, and so we prayed. And they started praying. And they started praying and I'm praying. And I'm praying as well. And I started crying. Now, I'm not a crier. I mean, I think you can tell. I get emotional every now and then, but I don't, I'm not like a crying, I'm not a crier. So, but I've noticed over the years, because I've had people pray over me, pastors, prophets pray over me, and every time they pray purposely on me, I always start crying. Like something in me is crying, but I know it's not me. So I'm like, so what is crying? And every time it happens, then I start crying and then I start vomiting. Cause you know with deliverance, sometimes you start spitting, vomiting, because you spit out the deposit, the evil deposits of the enemy, of the devil. And I start vomiting and I start crying. The vomiting I understand, but the crying was always confusing to me. It's been in the past, Pastor Tony, which is a, one of our pastors at our church, he's prayed for me before. But unfortunately, when he prayed, there was a manifestation, but there wasn't a deliverance. The demon will manifest and will say things like, and, and, the, and he was the one, he or she, we never understood the sex. But obviously, demons also don't really have sex, so it's a bit weird, so we say they. So they um, start crying. They start crying. They start saying things like, she's my best friend. You can't take her away from me. We're going to be together forever. Don't leave her. Don't let her leave me. She can't leave me. And things like that. So my mom, when those prayer sessions were happening, my mom would tell me these are the kind of things he was saying. But there wasn't any deliverance because I still felt the same. And I knew there wasn't any deliverance, but the demon manifested, so we knew what we were dealing with. So in that moment, I started crying, and at some point, he started talking, he or she, so they started talking. And it's crazy because it wasn't obviously me, but I was kind of conscious at some point, and at some point I wasn't anymore. But at the beginning, I was conscious. And this being, was like we've been together for so long. We've been together for so long. You cannot separate us. Obviously talking to my sister and Isaac, her husband. You cannot separate us. You cannot separate us. You can never separate us, you guys. What do you think you're doing? She's my best friend. And he started crying. She's my best friend. She's my best friend. She's my best friend. You guys, no. We are in a covenant. We are in a covenant. We're married. So as the prayers were getting more intensive, all this is happening. It's wild because my sister's still carrying Caleb, who is not a light baby. He's a chunky baby. So I'm like, how is she even doing this? I don't even know. <coughs> and then, um, then um, my, my um, brother-in-law is also um, is also praying. Sophia, my niece. She's like two and a half. She has no idea what's happening. She thinks it's all a game. She thinks we're just playing about. So she's like running around like thinking it's all a funny game, like thinking it's all like vibes. But it was serious. We went on for an hour. The whole thing lasted an hour, an hour and a bit. And he was just saying all these things. She's my best friend. You guys will never separate us and things. And we've been in a marriage covenant. We've been together. And he started crying. We've been together for so long. We've been together for so long. And then he starts spilling all this information. So we've been together for so long. We've been together. She and um, we married. We're in a marriage covenant. We have kids. So then I remember sometimes in my dreams. This is why we need to be careful of the dreams we dream. Sometimes in my dream, I'll see two kids, a boy and a girl. But I always thought, 
maybe they were like kids from the future or something oh they're my future kids or something so i never really like i'll be like oh god if it's not from you i can't say the name of jesus but it's literally like a five minute prayer and i walk away but yo guys we need to be serious i was married i was married you know when you hear about spiritual spouses this stuff is real we had a covenant we had a ring he said we have a ring you guys can't separate us she is mine i love her blah 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 it's some disgusting nonsense like how can a demon be in love with a human being but it happens it's like i love her i love her she's the love of my life you guys will never separate her she's mine she can never go anywhere else i made sure of that all these years these years i made sure that she never get married in all these years every guy that comes along every guy that comes every guy that comes into her life i made sure that will push her aggressive side that i will make this that will make this and that that will make him make her look a different way so that they will leave us alone because anna is mine anna is mine you guys don't know how hard i had to work she loves god too much i had to work extra hard to even be married to her like just all these things and so then my sister started asking questions like oh but what do you mean you're married what do you mean yes we are married we have a family we have two kids we have a family we are married we are married you guys can't separate us she's mine like he kept repeating that and then he was like you guys think that this is something of yesterday we've been married for 28 years what do you guys think you're doing what do you guys think you're doing so which means that <laughs> lord have mercy which means we've been together since I was five. And it's like I've been with her since she was five years old. I've been with her since she was, since she was five years old. You guys are not going to separate a marriage of 28 years. We've been together and we'll be together forever. You guys are so annoying. She was meant to kill herself. She was meant to kill herself so that she will not have any chance to redeem and get to redeem and recover everything that we've stolen so that she'll be here with me forever. I mean in hell. Because if you commit suicide, she'll be with me here forever and we'll be together forever because she's mine. And then my sister starts saying things like, we rebuked in the name of Jesus, you demon, get out. Start praying, started praying. You don't belong to her. The only one who truly loves her and will forever unconditionally love her is Jesus Christ. He loves her. He will always love her. He's always loved her. You know, all this stuff. He will always love her. He's always loved her. And forever into eternity, Anna belongs to God. Anna belongs to Jesus. She was dedicated as a child to Jesus. I don't know how you came in at five years old and you were able to, because of our ancestors, I understand, fine. But now today is your end. You're leaving. And he's like, your God is fake. Jesus is fake. The demon starts speaking. It's like, your God is fake. Jesus is fake. He doesn't love Anna. He doesn't even care about her because if he really did, wow, how come all these years he hasn't done anything for her? How come all these years he hasn't healed the disease? We, we, we placed it there and it's still there. So how come if he loves her so much, this and that, the others, we rebuked her with, with my sisters and my brother-in-law rebuked it in like, they just went on and on and on. And, um, it's crazy my sister told me because at some point i would go in and out my sister told me that at some point i was saying like my you're hurting me because my brother-in-law was holding my right hand and was like praying right so he's shaking it and at some point i was like like I, the thing was saying the, the, the being was saying you're hurting me you're hurting me so my sister's like oh you're hurting me you're hurting me so my sister thought that it was she wasn't sure she thought it was me so she was feeling like sad like oh isaac maybe let go a little bit because she said that you're hurting her but then my sister was like, wait, hold on. The Holy Spirit was like, but that's not Anna speaking. And so she was like, okay, then that's not Anna speaking. That's a demon. And it's like, and then she, she like, you shut up, you devil. Because how can you say you're hurting me? This body doesn't belong to you. How can something that doesn't belong to you, to you be hurting you? So then my sister went on, bam, fire, fire, fire. They were firing. At some point, like, I would like, lie, like, I was like, I'm like, dozing off. And like, no, get up. And then try to get me to stand up. And then, but before I stood up, I remember that I was still crying and I started crying like wailing like oh, like wailing like crying and they were like get out get out get out and they were like no I'm grieving my children are dead so they were commanded fire to kill those children because these children are not from God and not from Jesus we kill these children we kill these children I'm grieving I'm grieving my children are dead I'm grieving my children are dead so 
And then my brother was just like, why? So my sister was like, now that your children are dead, you're gonna die as well. You have no portion in my sister's life. And it's like, you think you can separate us. Even with these children are dead, I can make more children. We can make more children. And it's like, no. And then, you guys, you really wonder how they make these children. You know when you have dreams that things are, when you have dreams that things are having sex with you in dreams. I know a lot of you have these dreams. Guys, this stuff is not from God. This stuff is not from God at all. It's purely demonic. So he was just like, so we start, so they, my sister started firing over him, firing, get out, firing, firing. You know, have nobody, Anna's, Anna's God's redeem, Anna's God's child. She's the precious child of God. She's God's princess, blah, blah, blah. It's like praying over this thing. And this thing was like, I've done so much. I've done so much. I had to work so hard, guys. I had to work so hard. Please leave me alone. You know, I had to work extra hard because every time I tried to take her away from God, somehow she goes back to him. Why would she even care about who, a God who doesn't care about her? That's what he was saying. They were saying, why does he care about this God who doesn't care about her? I don't get it. I don't understand all of this. I was like, my sister's like, he cares about her because he gave his only son to die for her. So he does. She, Anna is the apple of God's eye. He has blessed her. He has anointed her for great words. He has blessed her with talents. He, she will make it. She will make it. Then he was like, when my sister mentioned that, and then he was like, oh yeah, and about that as well. I'm the reason she's not successful. Every time she will make it because I just want her to make, I just want to make sure that she stays in the presence so that eventually she will kill herself and come with me. So the plan was to use the sickness to kill me. But because the sickness wasn't killing me, is then bring frustrations around my life so that I would then take my own life. Since they can't kill you, they will do whatever it takes for you to kill yourself. And it reminded me of Job's story, right? Because in Job, it's like God was like, you can test him, take everything away from him to see if he really loves me. But you cannot touch his life. You can even touch his health, but you cannot take his life. So they can't kill Job, but they will take away everything so that he will do what his wife said to do, which is to curse God and die, which is probably to kill yourself. So if you curse God and die, just kill yourself. And this is, just, this is one of their biggest strategy. They can't kill you because you are anointed and you are touched. If God said, touch not my anointed one, and every one of us who lives, who has the Holy Spirit living in them, is an anointed one of God, they can't kill you. But what they will do is that they'll frustrate your life on every side so that you take your own life and they still win. Because you don't accomplish what God, what God brought you on earth for. And that was your plan. And it's like, yeah, it's in the reason. So, you know, we brought the sickness and we did this. I'm the reason she's not successful. Like every time she tries to do something and every time, that's why she's always frustrated with herself. She doesn't say why she's not moving forward, which we'll see before, because we caused this so that she will keep getting frustrated and then she'll eventually take her life, which was our plan. And then she'll be with me forever and be my wife forever. And I was just like, when afterwards I was like, this is so disgusting. This is disgusting on the purest form. And um, it's like, yeah, so, we pushed all we, we the reason she's not successful in the career or in the ministry and anything she does so that she'll be frustrated and so that she'll stay with me forever and so you know especially with the love with love life i made sure i made sure that i really worked extra extra hard to push the guys away they will come but then somehow you guys don't understand what they leave because i made sure they leave because anna is mine she has to stay with me she has to stay with me i said jesus have mercy my, my sisters prayed my sisters were pray my, my sister and my brother-in-law were praying, fire, commanding, until at some point, yeah, that went on and on and on. And it's like, yeah, but you guys, you guys don't know what your ancestors did. You guys don't understand what your ancestors did. I have every right to her. I have every right. And we know we took her five years old. And so you guys have no chance. You stand no chance, blah, 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 blah. blah. And then they commanded the fire of God, commanded the fire of God, commanded, commanded until at some point I was on my knees. I was on my knees and then I was like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then I was like, I remember my brother-in-law was like, he literally picked me up because I was on my knees on the ground in the, in the living room. And my brother-in-law picked me up and was like, Isaac picked me up and was like, Anna, is this you? And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's me. 
and we cried. We all, the three of us, me, my sister and my brother-in-law, we cried. And he was just like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, do you know what it means that something has left you? Something you've lived with for as long as you know. Because when I'm five, what do I know? Something you've lived with for as long as you know leaves you. And you never thought it would leave you because you were living with something, but you don't know what it is. You just know it's there. But you, because your mind can't think far, you don't know what it is. You don't understand what it is. And you're just like, but what is it? But you don't know what it is. You can't think, oh, it's a demon. Because you don't think that way. We don't think like that. So it's like, I don't know. But you know it's there and it lives with you constantly. So when it leaves, you know, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, some, something is always there. So when it leaves, it's only when you notice that it was there the whole time. It's like, oh, wow, I didn't know you were here. Like, it, it's so crazy. It's only when it left, I realized that it was there the whole time. And I knew it was there, but I didn't know what it was. And I was free. I was delivered. That was deliverance. That was my deliverance. On the 1st of January, 2024, I was set free from this spirit spouse. And we cried and we cried and we was, it wasn't a tear, it was tears of liberation. It was tears of freedom. It was tears of joy. It was tears of gladness that he, 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 God has set me free. 28 years married to something I didn't even know. Dedicated at five. What do you know? And it's so crazy because I'm like, my parents are Bible-believing Christians, faith-filled believing Christians. I am a faithful believing Christian. I live in the house of God. I was born in the house of God. I was raised in the house of God. I live my whole life for God, generally. Like, not in a, I, I just went to church because my parents were going to church. I've always loved God since I was a kid. My probably got it from my mom and my dad. I've always loved God. I've always been passionate about his word and his kingdom since I was a child. My parents raised us in the things of God. So if a whole me, a whole me in the sense of all these premises can have a spirit spouse, can be dealing with demons, with demons and all these things, how much more somebody who's in the world has no idea? How much more somebody who's not as spiritually in tune with the things of God? This stuff is not about being a Christian, not being a Christian, it's about the things that, that we are fighting with. Because unfortunately, because of our ancestors and their worship of idols and the things that they do, and the ones that are still alive today, the things that they still do, and the enemies in our families, in our friends, in our workplaces, wherever, the, which has the, an overall master, which is the devil, is fighting us. We will, we will be struggling because Paul said it, Paul's redeemed. He says we are not fighting against flesh and blood. He says, well, if you think we're fighting against flesh and blood, you're highly mistaken. He said, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against principalities, rulers of this dark world, dominions. This is what we are fighting against. So you better wear the armor of God and start fighting back. Claim back everything that belongs to you. I was struggling to share this because I'm like, God, it's going to sound so weird to people. But this stuff, guys, I've heard so many testimonies of these things so many and the fact that i am one of them now i'm like wow i never thought i would be one because i didn't think i had one but for me it's like it's an encouragement if marriage is delayed specifically because that's what this is about you know things in your life are not good you need to really ask the holy spirit to guide you and show you where things are going wrong and pray for deliverance that you'll be delivered from the chains and the bondages of the enemy because that ring that we had in my marriage covenant, a spiritual marriage was a, a chain was a bondage a lot of women in their 30s are not married and people think you know and to be honest it's not like you know this is the thing not everything is spiritual right so sometimes it's your bad character sometimes it's your attitude sometimes you're, but even that could be caused by something but in general it's not like sometimes you just haven't found the right person right but god is a god of time and structure okay and there's certain stages where it's like okay you need like you need to be married and be able to then if you want to have kids you know, and, and be fruitful be married and be fruitful so if you're in your 30s and things like that and you're still not married, we really need to look into these things because it's not 
if true, not everything is spiritual. And a lot of people can say that, oh, come on and relax. Not everything is spiritual. Yes, not everything is spiritual. Exactly, not everything is spiritual. Does not mean that everything isn't. We just said in the sentence, not everything is spiritual, which means that some things are. A lot of things are. This flesh, carnal life we're living, this flesh that we see, this body that we see, is temporary. We're all gonna die one day. What remains forever, whether in heaven or in hell, is our spirit. That's what remains. The spirit goes up into the heavens or into the Hades. So I just want to encourage anyone really like there's some things that you think they're never going to go away. I still have kidney failure. I'm still doing dialysis, you can see. But I know that God has set me free. And I know that it's just a matter of time for me to manifest. I know that I will heal others of this disease. As he heals me, I will heal others. He showed me all these things. God is merciful. God is so merciful. He showed me so much stuff. If I was to open my mouth and start talking, this video would be very long. I already died. I had an operation in 2016, 26th of July. I remember that day. And I died. I couldn't breathe anymore. I blacked out. There's a whole situation with the NHS. Let's not even talk about that. Let's focus on the miracle. On how they handle the situation. How I even got to the point where I passed out. But I'll go into more details another time. But just to give you a glimpse of what God has done for me. And I'm grateful for. And I'll forever be grateful. And I always have to remind myself to be grateful. And never look down on myself. And my circumstances. I died. But you know what? Already there, I started having those suicidal thoughts. So I was like, I'm also ready to die because this life sucks. This life like this, with this disease, always in and out of the hospital. I've been to the hospital so many times, I can't even count. I've had operations with the I used to do at the hospital. Now I do the one at home. But before I used to do at the hospital, three times a week, four hours per session. You come out, you literally feel like you've been hit by like five tracks. You literally can't even stand straight terrible terrible like a concussion to your body you like you can't even think the things my body has been through hmm. and i died because i was like this life sucks i don't want to do this anymore and so i was ready to go i'm like god the first person that came to my mind was each my mom i said god comfort my mom and it's crazy because the day after him my dad was meant to come and see me so i'm like oh they couldn't even wait till they came I said I said, God, comfort my mom, comfort my dad, comfort my sisters, and comfort my friends, please, at the church. And the people at church, a hard church, God, comfort them, but, yeah. And I was going, I was gone. I was gone, this records, I was done, I was gone. And then, a peace, a peace I have never, ever, ever felt in my life. Like nothing ever in my life. A peace I've never felt before. I was like, yeah, this is heaven. This is beautiful. This is amazing. And the most beautiful, angelic voices, different harmonies, different pitches, different tonalities, like different voices. But they all come together in unison and harmony singing holy 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 is the lord god almighty it's just so beautiful guys honestly near-death experiences are real and that was mine and it was amazing obviously i'll do another video for this but it was beautiful because i was like this is what life is supposed to be like just this peaceful but then as i was uh, approaching god i could hear the rumble of his voice you see him on his throne golden throne huge surrounded by angels with trump he's just there but you can't see anything, you just see a cloud and lights, loads of light. And only all you can hear is his voice. And his voice says, it's not your time. <laughs> it's not your time. He didn't even give me the time to rebate me, like, oh, what do you mean? Come on. Because he knows I would. And he just slapped me back on that. So I remember like opening my eyes again and I was here. 
And the doctor was like, oh my god, guys, she's here, she's here, she's here. Like I said, the doctor was screaming, oh my god, she's here, she's here, she's here. And um, I was confused because I was like, where did I go? Well, then I figured it was just really weird. And then I had people, uh, the, the couple of nurses as well on the side, with the the the, the fibrillator, the bifri, the brifilator, whatever that thing that you that you use to like when people like have like their heart stops being, and you like. So they were about to do that with me, and uh, because I came back, there was just no need. So I'm like, right, I was gone. And it was like a recurring joke with my friends. I went to the Hades, guys. I went to the Hades. Honestly, it just I didn't go to the Hades. I went to heaven, but. You know, it was a joke, like I make into a joke, but they were like... And there's a whole story behind that with that anyways, as in like afterwards the nurses were like, you need to report the doctors because of the way they, were, they treated me, the way they handled the whole thing was really poorly. But it's basically to say that when it's not your time, God will not let you come. Like, I was there, I was ready. I'm like, God, let's hug. Father, son, to see you. But he was like, it's not your time yet, and slapped me back on earth. and. And I'm like, oh, I'm back here to deal with this nonsense. I'm back here to deal with these things. Shortly after, well, not shortly after, but like a couple of years after, I came back to Italy because um, it was really bad. And my mum was like, come home, come home. So, and it was in the same period. So it was before this operation, I remember, or after, that I remember that, like, my uncle came to visit me because 2016 was the worst year of my life before 2022 but it was so in general 2016 is the second worst year of my life i was really sick it's the year i went through all the operations it's a year that i had to start dialysis well i started dialysis afterwards but i did the operation before it was just very it was a terrible terrible time i had peritonitis which is the infection of dialysis for the first time i lost a lot of weight 2016 was not fun fun i mean it was fun in the sense of like that's the year I was doing an academy um, at my church, like an internship program at church with my friends, and that's the year I ended it. But overall, it was a tough year, and it was difficult. But I remember, so it was tough. My mom came to visit me. She was with me in this time, and um, to take care of me and be around me. And it was a tough period. I started questioning God and. I remember asking her mom if God loves me, why is he doing these things to me? And my mom, bless her, she never could handle, it was, she never could handle angry Anna. She just didn't know what to do with me. Like angry Anna for normal things, cool. Like she'd just be angry back. Like me and her had the same personality. So it's like, you're angry, I'm angry too. Who cares, do you know what I mean? But angry Anna when it comes to God, cause she always knows I love God. So when I'm like angry at God, she doesn't know what to do. And so I remember she called my dad and my dad was like, Mamina, because he calls me Mamina. Mamina, what's happening? And I'm like, dad, like, I'm just so tired of this. Like, why is God doing this to me? Why? Do... So my dad would have a conversation with me about it and I calm down and stuff. And, you know, so all of that was happening. The day after was a Saturday and my uncle came to visit me with his wife. And they came and you know, he was telling me, Anna, you need to have faith. You need to believe in God. You need to keep trusting God that, you know, everything is going to be fine. And I was like, hmm, okay, okay. And he was like, do you know that God is capable of healing anything? There's nothing impossible for God. I'm like, yeah, I know this. I am the first one who believed it. When I was a little girl, I remember being a teenager and I was like, I want to see this God of miracles. The God who passed the Red Sea. I want to see him for myself. I want to experience him for myself. So I prayed this prayer in a time of my life when I wasn't experiencing anything bad. So I know God can do all things. What I don't understand is why he's not doing it now. Like, why is he not doing it for me? And you know, then my uncle's like, you know, he makes everything beautiful in this time. You need to trust his timing and this. And that's the, that's the truth. And he said, you know, like, there's a storehouse in heaven. There's a storehouse in heaven with everything you need. And I was like, a storehouse in heaven? What do you mean? And he was like, a storehouse in heaven with every body part every single body part and i was like okay all right okay fine i'm not somebody who's going to argue now with you and be like oh no that's not true you say so that's fine so when he left i was still thinking about it i'm like is he for real like, what? no i mean if there was then why people like surely everybody will just go up like god you take us to heaven grab what we need and 
continue living our lives, right? And so that night, so crazy, I had, no, my mom left, so my mom left that the week after. So the week after my mom left, so it's been like two weeks since this encounter, a week and a half something. And then I had this, I was in my room, I was sleeping, and I had this dream, but I didn't, it wasn't a dream, it was like a vision, like a dream, like it was just so real. So I went to the bathroom and I came out and then I was like, Phew, into heaven. And I thought, oh my days, my sisters, are my sisters gonna be here too? Because I was thinking about them. Are they gonna be here as well? What about my parents? Are they here too? Like, I wanna make sure that all my friends, my friends, are they all here? So I was there like, okay. And I came to this place, okay. All this is gonna sound like fantasy gibberish to you. I know what I've seen and I know what I've experienced and I know the stuff is real. So if you wanna believe it, God will bless you for it. And if you don't, I hope God takes you to a point where you do eventually believe it. I don't even answer at a massive storehouse, right? So this place is huge warehouse, a warehouse. I feel like a storehouse is smaller. I don't know, I don't know the technicalities, but a massive warehouse, huge, okay? Huge. I was so small in this place. It's dark, couldn't see anything. So I said, oh, it's so dark. I wish there was some light so I could see. Then light came. Like I was like, I literally said it. I was like, oh, it's so dark. I can't see anything really well. So I wish there was some light so I can see. Boom, the light came on. You guys, <laughs> light came on. And I was like, okay. And I'm like, what is this place? I'm literally trying to understand what is this place? Every single human body part was there but not only that also because some sicknesses you need a body part like for me kidney failure I need kidney somebody with liver disease I needs a liver somebody with lungs disease I need a lung somebody with heart disease needs a heart all this stuff is you need right but some sicknesses they're not really like they're not really connected to an organ like I can't think of anything like autism or well, it's to do with your brain, but like some things and I've got nothing to do with the, with a specific organ. It's just something that's in your body that's not doing well. So you don't need an organ replacement. You just need a medicine that will make you, that will make the sickness go away. And that was also there. You guys, things have never, I, I'm not a doctor. I didn't study medicine. So there were so many words. I didn't even understand what it was. So I woke up, I had to Google some words because I'm like, is this real? So like, for example, endocrinology, I've never heard what endocrinology is. I still, right now, I still don't even know what it is. I think it's something to do with your glands. I think it's a glands one because I Googled it. And there was, and so the, the body parts were, they were all jars. So there's loads of jars in a lot of shelves. There's so many shelves from this side to this side, to this side, to this side. So it's a, it's a squared room, it's huge, and the shelves all around the, the, the square warehouse and on these shelves are all the body parts in jars like jars basically like <laughs> I don't know how to explain in jars and according to obviously the body part if the jars are small or big or according if it's a medicine then it's a small one and and they're all labeled like this is when you know that we serve a god of order he's a god of organization and order he made the world in six days rest of the seven like he did things in order Everything is labeled, everything is done, and I'm like, okay. So I'm looking around, I see feet on, like I see different things. So there's body parts mixed with the potions. I call them potions because they're like the medicines of what people will drink to be well. So I'm looking at all of this and I'm overwhelmed because I'm like, wow. So this, but what my uncle was saying, because he said that he's, he's had heard testimonies of people talking about it, and he knows it, he believes it because he knows it's true. And I'm like, okay, so what my uncle was talking about is true. Like, this place is real. Okay, so I'm like, okay, well, then I need to quickly, that's like, I need to find kidneys so I can grab them and go. But then I won't grab maybe a heart as well because I, at the time I also had, um, at the time I also had high blood pressure. So okay, I need to also grab a heart and maybe grab something for somebody else that needs it. I don't know. So I'm looking now. I'm like, okay, so what is the order of all of this? Okay, because you have all these things in jars labeled so you can read feet, break, like all these things, right? But what is the order? So I'm thinking alphabetical order. So I'm looking for K. K, let me look for K, 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 K. I can't find K. And I've seen that, okay, it's not an alphabetical order because it's all, this, this is not alphabetical order because they're all different. Like, 
something, I see C, then I see B, then I see G, then I see L. So this is not alphabetical. So what order is it? And then I, well, I went to the beginning of the shelves all the way down, then like this, this, and the back, right? So it's four. Four big, long shelves. And I realized that the order is the top of your head to the sole of your feet, just like the Bible says. So the order of everything is from the top of your head. And so the top of the head was a lot of stuff because you know there's so many things I did psychology, so that one I do know. There's so many things that did go wrong with our brains. And you know our brains also have different parts that make the the occipital part, the parietal, the frontal, there's all these parts that can go wrong and create different disorders in our bodies. There were so many, there's physical brains, but there's also the different portions for people that don't need a different brain. They need a drink. They don't need the physical brain, do you know what I mean? So for example, like Parkinson, yes, it's connected to the brain, but you don't need the physical, you need like a drink that would like take it away or dementia, do you know what I mean? It's to do with the brain, but you don't need a physical brain. You need like a drink and it was all there. So I was like, oh my gosh, okay, so let's keep going. So I get into the middle. Now in the middle, we're dealing with the stuff to do with your upper body, but I couldn't, you know, so I was like, I need to get to the lower part of the body, but there's so much. Guys, there's so many sicknesses in this world. There's so many things that with our decaying body because of sin can go wrong with our bodies. Like there's so much stuff. So I'm like, I need to get to the K. I need to get to the stomach side where I know the, well, wherever side I know the kidneys are. So I'm getting there and all I hear is footsteps. At some point I start hearing footsteps because it will just me in this room. And I'm like, wait, somebody's coming. So I panic. I hear footsteps, I panic, and I like, I go and hide in the, the shelves behind. So, you know, one, two, three, and four. So I run and hide behind that one, the feathers away from the door, because the door was between this shelf and the shelf here, there's a door. And I'm like, I can hear footsteps, can let me run away. So I run away and hide, and I'm like, I hide in this corner, I'm like, God, please, whoever it is. They were running like they were in a hurry. They were running like, they were running like they were in a hurry. And so I, I, I panicked, I was scared, so I, I hid. I was afraid, so I hid. And I was just sitting there, and then the door, door opened, and two people came in and was like, where is she, where is she? We need to find her before she finds what she needs, before she finds her kidneys, before she finds what she needs. I'm like, okay, so I was right, they're not good people. And they were like, where is she, where is she hiding? So I'm like, oh my gosh, they're gonna find me, they're gonna find me, they're gonna kill me, are they gonna do, what are they gonna do to me, I don't know, I don't know. So I'm just sitting there like, God, please protect me. God, save me. God, protect me. And as I was there, an angel came. It's like, let me show you the other way out from like a back. So you know it's a warehouse, so there's like back ways as well. And so he took my hand and took me out. But then I was like, yeah, but we're leaving. But what about my kidneys? I just want kidneys, please. And then he was like, Anna, not now. Now is not the time. Now is not the time. And he was taking me away because these people came in and they would have hurt me. And so he took me out. I was like, you can run this way. Took me to another door. Then I ran. I just started running. I don't even know where I was going. But then as I was running, then I woke up. And I woke up and I was like, I'm disappointed, God. Like, really? You, you show me this for what? Then I didn't come with what I wanted. But it's amazing because it shows me that God is merciful. When he says his name is Jehovah Rapha, our healer, it's true. Every disease, every sickness, he has a cure for it. That's why the Bible says he's our healer and there's nothing impossible for him. He heals our diseases, he forgives our trespasses because he does. The Bible, when Jesus was on earth, there was not one sickness that Jesus couldn't heal. There was not one disease that Jesus couldn't heal. Everything he can do and he wants to do. He is the healer. He can heal every disease. Now, obviously, the situations where he doesn't, like my mom, we prayed. But with my mom, he told us she's finished her job and she's here. We gave her the option and she said she wants to stay here with me. Because sometimes God gives people the option. He did it with my friend's mom as well. Once she was in heaven, I'm like, of course she would stay. Because if you're in heaven, why would you want to come back? If he gives you the option, why would you want to come back? And she stayed. So sometimes that doesn't happen because of that. He gives the person the option. Do you want to come back here? Do you want to stay here? Or go back. When you see heaven, you're never going to say I'm going back on earth. Why? Like, God, please, I pray that as I'm here, I will strengthen them. And your grace will be their portion, comfort. 
or you will never go back. When it, God gave me the choice that 2016, 26th of July, I would have not come back. There's no way. What am I doing? To do what? So sometimes healing doesn't happen. But just because sometimes healing doesn't happen as we pray for healing and it doesn't happen, doesn't mean that he doesn't want to or he, he doesn't want to or he's not capable of. Because he's capable, he's the omnipotent, potent God. He can do all things. So we are still here. We are still believing. I know that God will heal me. He has already healed me. We're just waiting for the manifestation. I know and I believe and I've always believed that God will heal me supernaturally. And I know he will. 3% kidney failure. The only way you can heal is supernaturally. There's no other solution. There's no other permanent healing. If anybody's thinking, what about transplant? Transplant is not healing. If you want to think it is, uh, if like transplant is not healing. It's a replacement therapy. But eventually, it can last a lot of years, but it's not healing. It's not because there's no cure. It's an incurable disease. It's not a cure, that's it. It's a therapy. It's not a cure. Because this disease, kidney failure, doesn't have a cure. They're doing research, they're working on cells and whatnot, but it's an incurable disease. So what they do with the transplant, which is the best therapy at the moment, is a, is a replacement therapy that helps you to live a normal life for as many years as this borrowed kidney can allow you to live. But it's not healing. It's not permanent. And I want permanency. And everybody can have their choice. I don't definitely condone Christians who have done a transplant. Everybody in your journey, everybody in your life. But for me, from the beginning of time, I knew that this is what I wanted. And I know that this is what God is going to do for me. And if he doesn't, then he doesn't. Then he's God and I will still be Anna and God will still be God. It doesn't change anything. But I know he has done it already and we're just waiting for the manifestation of it. And I also know that he has anointed me, that as I have been healed and received healing, I shall also heal others in turn. Whatever you're going through is your ministry. I heard there's so many preachers at Heart Church and different preachers, KFT, um, Kingdom Full Tabernacle as well online. And whatever, and my dad as well at church, Pilgrim Vicenta, anything, whatever, Pastor Kof has said this before as well, which is Pilgrim Basan as well. A lot of people basically, and a lot of the churches I've been to, that whatever you're going through is your ministry. Whatever your circumstances are, the difficult circumstances that you're, you're facing right now, exactly what God is going to use through you to redeem this world. And I know nobody wants to be a hero. I don't want to be a hero. I don't even care to be a hero. Like I, I know some people do. Good for you. I, I don't care. I don't want to, but it's not... Even the reason I'm doing this video, I wouldn't do this video. But honestly, I had to, my sister had to remind me that this is not about us. It's not about me. It's about God and his kingdom come on earth. And his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now that my spirit spouse is dead, I know the miracles are going to follow one after the other. And I will be on the same platform to testify to you guys the goodness of God in the land of the living. Here on earth. Not somewhere else. Here on earth. So your struggles, the difficult things you're going through, it picks one of my favorite scriptures, which is 2 Corinthians. Sorry, I have to go and get my Bible because I can't remember it. But it was 2 is 2 Corinthians chapter 1. The whole chapter is great, but the verses I wanted, that's my favorite verse, is the verses of verse 4 and 5, which says, He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort we receive from God. Verse five, for the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort to Christ. So your pain is never in vain. Your hardships, your troubles, your delays, everything that you feel like is delayed in your life, they're never in vain because that is your ministry. That is what God is going to use to bring healing to the hearts of other people. Whether it's a physical disease, whether it's a mental illness, whether it's financial troubles, marital delay, childbearing delay, barrenness, not being able to give birth, miscarriages, whatever it is, career delays, anything that you feel like you're trying to like ministry delays, like you're moving forward, but you can't move forward. It's a struggle. It's tough. Remember that God is going to use all of this 
for his glory and for you then to see your purpose in all of that so i'm going to cut this video short because it's already long but all of these different things i mean i was going to just speak about my deliverance but then the holy spirit got into all this and this year like, like we're fighting procrastination we're fighting the fear of success because you know everybody talks about fear of failure for me it was never fear of failure if i fail i fail in it what's the problem i'll just try again i'm that kind of person for me it was always about fear of success which is odd because it's not very common but it was a big stronghold on my life that was broken on that first of january because Yes, it was the demon doing what he wanted, what they wanted, but the fear of success that, well, what if I actually make it? What if I actually become successful? Then my life is going to change. People are going to start acting different towards me. Or things will be different. And, you know, with success, a lot of times comes to a level of fame. Like, people start recognizing the street. I can't just walk by without somebody stopping me. Do I want this life? I don't want this life, God. I don't know. I don't want it. I don't want this. I don't want the success that will change because success changes your life in good. But it, I would just look at the negative sides. Do I have to move out from this house because then everybody will, will always want to talk? Like, do you mean like then will people will people stop being friends with me because of my success or will people stop being friends with me because I'm Anna? Then, I mean, will my friends continue to be my friends because they love me or because I'm successful? It's just how my family, my family starts demanding from me more because now i'm successful jimmy you know I mean? like life changes and i'm just like i don't want this i don't want any of this so it makes you stay even more stuck and to stay in that mediocre level mediocre average lifestyle that god never intended for any of us and so this year we're beating all of us the freedom of experience i pray that everybody listening to me right now everybody under the sound of my voice will experience the same deliverance and will experience the same freedom in every area of your life that needs it. Because if you don't receive deliverance, you, be, you can make all the efforts, save all the money, do all you need to do and still you're stuck at the same point. You can, if you don't receive deliverance from whatever spirit spouse, whatever is that's happening, you can dress the best, be the most glamorous, the most elegant, the prettiest, the, the the nicest the kindest woman in the world you could be have it all figured out your career is great you're a nice person everything no matter what you do no matter how hard you try you will never see anybody look your way twice because there are struggles i repeat ephesians chapter 6 we don't fight against flesh and blood so i pray and my prayer is everyone who is listening to me who experience the same deliverance the power of the Holy Spirit and the fire of the living God who is alive and cares about his children will experience this deliverance in every area that is stagnant in your lives in the name in the mighty name of Jesus you are holy and is holy forever the God who answers by fire you are our God and I pray for the sake of myself and this testimony Reveal yourself unto your people. Reveal yourself unto your children. Reveal yourself to them. Let them know that you are true and you are real. Thank you, Jesus, because there is no one like you. Thank you for saying, so dying for our sins so that we can be free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I hope this, this makes sense. Please comment. Please share. Please like. Ask me questions. My email, I'm going to put it there. If you want to ask me a question, find me on Instagram. You can send me on Twitter, whatever. There's threads now on Facebook. You can find me and ask me questions. If you need somebody to vent to, if you need somebody to cry with, trust me, I know these feelings. So if you need anything, we're here. God is there for you. God is the first person you go to. But I'm also here for anything in my capacity that I can. I can do let me know. I hope you have a fantastic week and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.